a good evening welcome back man welcome to uh another episode here on planet hog and um hope everyone had a uh, splendiferous day but this conversation here has been a long time coming And I've held off on it for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, because I always like to give, whenever I'm uh, changing or challenging my previous stance on something, I like to give it time to marinate to make sure I'm not making just some kind of uh, whimsical, you know, knee-jerk kind of reaction. And then also number two, because uh, in doing what I do, I come in contact with a lot of immigrants. A lot of immigrants. And they all have interesting stories to tell. Uh, You know, I'm not callous to the point where I'm not willing to listen to their stories. So long as they came here the right way. Uh, If they came here the wrong way, I do want to hear that story too. Because uh, I make a quick phone call. Just stay right there. But I have changed positions, ladies and gentlemen. I have changed positions. I used to be one of those people that said, well, look, man, if you come here legally, if you come here the right way, welcome. Welcome and enjoy. That is out of the window. There it goes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care if you came here legally or not. It's time to shut it down. We need to pull a John Taffer and shut it the fuck down. We need to shut it down. My heart goes out to you. First gen, second gen. Look, there needs to be a cutoff, uh, right? Larry David, there has to be a cutoff. There has to be a cutoff for everything. There should be a cut off. Has anyone been keeping tally? Do we even know anymore? Of course we don't. We know the answer to that question. So we're just going to keep letting people in. It's almost like we have this kind of guilt about being a prosperous nation that somehow because this nation was prosperous, we owe it to these people and somehow or even in the inverse, these people are owed They think that because this nation's successful, they're owed a piece of the success. No. Stay where you are and build your shit up. I understand it's hard. And maybe this is me talking from a place of privilege. Yeah, maybe it is. That doesn't make it wrong, though, now does it? Because this wasn't always a privileged place to be, was it? No. But we stuck through it and we built something out of it. We didn't just quit. And say, I'm going to go over there where it's popping off. I don't understand. I don't understand how a man has that mentality anyway. That you don't even want to build your own shit. You want to just take what somebody else has. And just leech off and sponge off of them. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. You know. It's funny. Listening to people bitch about not making a livable wage. And ironically enough, not ironic, because these people are ignorant, but as fate would have it, apropos enough, these are the same people that say, no borders, let everyone in. Okay, stupid. Why do you think the labor prices, why do you think you don't get paid as much as people in your position in previous generations did? Two major factors impacting pay in the labor market that no one likes to talk about. Number one, first and foremost, going chronologically, feminism. Mm-hmm. And number two is immigration. And they impact it for the same reason. You see, feminism, which kicked off sometime after or around the end of World War II, Told women, you don't have to stay at home. You need to be out there working. You can work too. We can do it. Uh Uh-huh. You can. But what happens? Well, now, the job market that was primarily 
not primarily, almost exclusively male. Well, now you have females that can do those same jobs. Great for your self-esteem, whatever. But you know who else it's good for? The employer. Think of it like think of it like an inverse auction and how an auction works just in inverse. And at auction there is a product this here half drink beer bottle of fat tire. I'm going to start the bidding at $5 because we're at a baseball game and beer is insanely expensive. And then one person says five. And then what happens? The price goes up and this continues until people stop bidding. Well, think of it the other way. Instead of the auctioneer, I'm an employer. Instead of a beer bottle, I have a job. And the going rate for this job was $10 an hour when it was just all you dudes in here. And the same thing can be said for labor unions, right? Because that's when they all came together and said, look, Nobody take it for under 10. Are we in agreement? Yes, we're in agreement. Okay. And when they work together, well, then they have some leverage. But now imagine there's somebody who's new to the market, may not necessarily have your skills. It's their first time out there. The employer looks at them and says, well, how about you? What can you do? Well, I don't really have their skills. I'll tell you what, I'll give you the job so you can get the skills, but I'll only pay you eight. Okay. Because if that's your goal, to get a job, to get in the workforce, because eight's more than zero, well, you just took the job for less. But you're going to get the skills, and eventually you'll make more. But what is? how does that impact the people who are getting paid 10? Well, now, if there's a bunch of you, like there were with women and subsequently immigrants, well, now that price is going to go down because there's more of you who will take it for eight. And now what was once a $10 an hour job has overnight become an $8 an hour job until you get the newest crop of unskilled workers. And then the process repeats itself. And we go from an $8 an hour job to, hey, who are you in the back? Oh, I'm so-and-so illegal or even legal, but you need to have a job to stay here, at least for now. So now we can repeat the process again. Well, this was an $8 an hour job, and you don't really have any of the skills we need, and you don't even speak English. Uh, We'll pay you seven. Well, if you came from a socialist country, wow, seven sounds good. And obviously, we have minimum wage and all this other stuff. But I'm explaining to you how this works, how the labor market essentially gets watered down when you keep adding more people. And this is why, back in the day when you had labor strikes and people would try to go to work, they would beat the shit out of them and maybe even kill them. Because you're essentially taking people out of a job or at the very least forcing them to take that same job at a much lower pay rate. And this is why, by the way, you'll always see major companies, major corporations, Amazon, companies especially that rely on labor. You'll always see them supporting illegal immigration. And you think it's, oh, because they're so woke and they're so progressive. (laughs) Yes, stupid. That's what we want you to think. Not because uh, we're going to be able to drop this wage here real quick, real soon. Yeah, keep coming. Keep coming. Yes, absolutely. More work for them. Less for you. Unless you want to take a pay cut. But I've been here five years. I know how to do this job better than them. Ah, well... But nobody discusses those two things as monstrous of factors as they are to decreasing wages. But that aside, my stance on immigration has really changed for a couple of reasons. Number one, we're not getting the cream of the crop. The cream always rises to the top. Yeah, we're not getting the cream of the crop. And I'll get more on that in a little bit, because it seems like we're actually getting the bad apples. It seems like these these societies are actually purging themselves of the criminals at our expense. But I'll get more into that in a second. The other reason for my change in position with regards to immigration is because, well, look. We get a lot of Ilhan Omars, and I did an episode on her. She was one of the first episodes I did, actually. I just, one of the first three or four or five, I don't know. We get a, people, a lot of people like her. See, she's a first or second generation. I think second. 
I think she was a, no, 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 she was a child when she came here, so she's first. And she came from, uh, I believe, Somalia. So she went from that wasteland of child soldiers and all kinds of untold atrocities. And before she's got gray in her hair, she's got the nerve to talk down on the country that prevented her from becoming a prostitute. Probably to a nine-year-old boy as they go out and fight over some dirty pond. But you have these people, they get here, and then they've already got a fucking protest sign demanding free college. Demanding that more of them be let in. Demanding that regardless of the fact that they came here illegally and thusly committed a felony, all should be forgiven. You understand that those people actually got stimulus checks. They've contributed zero. But they've already taken from the pot. There's no gratitude. But what we're supposed to just accept them. Ingracious and. Entitled as they've become. Again, the the goal to have a program like DACA, where these people are demanding free college simply because they broke the law and came to a country that they have no lineal claim to. Meanwhile, there are people here whose family has been here for generations legally, whose family has contributed to the economy, whose families have bolstered and built this nation to be the great place and the beacon that seems to attract these vagabonds from around the world, and they can't afford to go to college. They can't afford to send their kids to college. Well, not without taking out massive debts and putting their kids behind the eight ball for umpteen years, but you're going to give it away for free to people who shouldn't even be here. And fuck, shouldn't even be here. Even the ones who are here the right way, free college, you should be at the very back of the line. You should just focus on being a good citizen, smiling every day, being happy to be here, showing some appreciation, busting your ass, earning your lug. I mean, it even applies in other things, right? So if you start a new job, do you get insurance day one? Not all of them. There's a grace period. Do you get full employee benefits day one? No. Do you get maxed out leave and all that shit day one? No. You know, in the military, after you got out of basic training, they put you in tech school. They have what was called the phase program, where you start to get your civil liberties back a little bit at a time. They don't let you just go out because you've been caged up. You don't really know how to appreciate it. And maybe it's a little bit too much for you too fast. Well, maybe we should implement something like that. Instead of just giving them everything at the door, maybe you have to earn your right to vote after maybe 15 years, after a generation or so. I bet it'll mean more to you then. Maybe you have to earn the right for higher education after several generations. I'm thinking out loud here. But the idea of just giving them everything day one makes no sense to me. And it doesn't apply anywhere else. But then the other thing is more logistical. Right. Uh, Let's digress into maybe uh, an analogy that could be appropriate. Maybe not. You be the judge. How many of you guys have been to a a party, right? Like a frat party, a family party, whatever. You have this party, this house party. You've invited. You already know how many guests you have. You've already made the preparations. You've got booze. You've got food. You've got space, little dance floor, whatever. But as this party goes on, and perhaps some of you have experienced this, I know I have, you get a lot of people just wandering the street. Oh, there's a party going on over there. They decide they want to come. So they pay their admission. Maybe they don't. For this example, let's just say they do. But they keep coming. What ends up happening? Well, we start to run out of beer. 
faster than we thought. We start to run out of booze faster than we thought. Maybe things start disappearing. Shouldn't have left that Xbox out. Well, now it's gone. People can't find their phone. It's getting crowded. People start bumping into each other. Now we got fights. Takes forever to get on the beer pong table. Takes forever to get downstairs. No room to dance. People start getting irritated. Why? Because now there are foreigners invading a space that they had no claim to. Now let's take it a step further. It's the later hours of the night. You've had a few to drink. Maybe you're not watching that door. Maybe you're employing the uh, Joe Biden door watch policy, which is to say nothing at all. Now you've got all kinds of people coming in. Some shady types who didn't pay. Maybe they came in through the back door. Had to clear that. And maybe they're not there to have fun. Maybe they're there to see what they can take. Maybe they're there to start trouble. You get the point of how this thing spirals out of control because you're not paying attention to who's coming in. And lastly, why my position has changed, and this is perhaps most recently informed, sticking with the party analogy. Let's say you've invited a group. You got everybody there on your guest list, but you know, a couple of guys on the guest list, maybe they don't get along so good, but you know, you're trying to do the right thing. You know, you're friends with both of them, whatever it is, you're not picking a side. So they both show up at the party and before you know it, they're at each other's throats. They're beefing again. They're up in each other, you know, they're they're causing a scene. There's about to be a fight. Maybe there already was a little skirmish. And everybody who tries to get involved either gets shut down or gets threatened or maybe even gets hurt. And that's what we get here now, right? Because you have Palestinians fighting Israelis in New York. You have Muslims in London. I forget if it's east or west. They've pretty much taken it over. But they're enforcing Sharia law on regular British citizens. Regular people, regular women that walk there. They're being told to cover up. Or they're being harassed or worse. Again, these are immigrants. Most recently down here, now you have Cuban immigrants, people of Cuban descent, standing in the highway to shut down the highway because they're protesting the killing of their people. Uh, We talked about this yesterday, but there's, there's protesting in Cuba over communism. And they want Joe Biden to get involved. Good luck with that. Shit in one hand, pray in the other. See which one fills up first. But understanding that they're not happy about what's happening to their family at home. But what's that got to do with Joe Blow, who's actually just trying to get to work? I'm not a fucking immigrant. I was born here, but you're blocking the highway that I need to drive on to get to my job on time to put money in my pocket so I can take care of my family. That was born here, by the way. See, there seems to be too much baggage with these people. And look, not for nothing, everybody's got baggage, but this is not baggage that's organic to here. So don't bring your shit here. For all intents and purposes, it should roll off your back. Right about the time they're putting that pin on your shirt and saying you are now officially a U.S. citizen. All those problems should be behind you. Or at least should be compartmentalized to the point where they're not interfering with everybody else's life. And, you know, while I'm at it, it is kind of annoying to go to 7-Eleven in the morning for a coffee. 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and stand at the back of this line, this, this, this train of Latinos. Latinxes for the Wokies. None of whom speak English. They're all getting, you know, two bananas and a bottle of aloe water, uh, a newspaper, 
paying with a hundred dollar bill at six in the morning. The cashier doesn't have change. Now we got to sit here and wait for the cashier to count out a bunch of ones because he doesn't have anything smaller and he doesn't speak English. And no, of course, nobody else can at least throw all of your items up there. Yeah, yeah. Pablo, you throw your string cheese up. You have a string cheese and a Gatorade. Great. Uh, Maria, you put your apple up here. Uh, yep, you get your peanut butter up here. Yeah, you're all getting individual items, but nobody has a bill smaller than a fucking hundred dollar bill. So how about you motherfuckers huddle up, throw it all up there, one of you pay, and then, you know, square it off later when all 10 of you go home to the same house. Square it up then. There should be, ah, there should be some kind of a, you look, you go to Disney, right? You go to your amusement parks. What do they have? They have season passes for the people who are annual. And then for the people who are day pass people, the people who just paid for the day. Well, guess what? They have their own line, but the season pass people don't wait in line. They go straight to the front or they have their own line. But they're never inconvenienced, at least not for long, by the people who are just there for the day. So how about we compromise and come up with some kind of some kind of American pass for the rest of us so we don't have to wait in line because it's pretty fucking annoying. Especially when you take into consideration, there's a good chance that most of them shouldn't be here. Just thinking out loud. But let's go to some statistics, right? Because you got to back some of this stuff up with facts. Oh, man. Well, all of this will be down in the description, of course, everything that I am referencing. But uh, non-citizens, I'm on Heritage.org site talking about uh, crime and illegal immigrants. Non-citizens constitute only 7% of the U.S. population. Yet the latest data from the Justice Department Bureau's of oh, excuse me the justice department's bureau of justice statistics that's a weird title reveals that non-citizens accounted for nearly two-thirds of all federal arrests in 2018 just two decades earlier only 37 percent of federal arrests were non-citizens so we've went from 37 percent to approximately 60 well it says 64 there so 64 percent Those arrests weren't just for immigration crimes. Non-citizens accounted for 24% of all federal drug arrests, 25% of all federal property arrests, and 28% of all federal fraud arrests. Last year, Mexican citizens accounted for 40% of all federal arrests. They're not sending... Their best and brightest, folks. Let's jump to another site. Federal arrests of non-U.S. citizens more than tripled from 1998 to 2018. That's just to 2018. Rising 234%. I can't even calculate that percentage. While federal arrests of U.S. citizens rose 10% over the same period. In 2018, non-U.S. citizens accounted for 24% of all federal drug arrests. Okay, we did this one. In 2018, 85% of federal arrests of non-U.S. citizens were for immigration offenses. That is money tied up in the system to deal with people who should not be here. There were 21 federal criminal immigration arrests per 100 apprehensions by the U.S. Border Patrol in the Southwest Border Patrol sector in 2018. 21 per 100. So what's being done with illegal immigrants now? Well, perhaps you've heard, but this article will also be down in the description box. I don't know if you follow uh, Tucker Carlson. But Tucker Carlson just released an email from a member of the U.S. military. I believe he was an Air Force lieutenant colonel. Yep. Joe Biden is having the military transport illegal immigrants around the country, just scattering them. Small towns, 
suburbs. The military is now a taxi for illegal immigrants. And that's where we are. But it's not where we used to be. Remember Ellis Island? Because, you know, you always get these goofy people, usually women, usually women with these stupid signs. I mean, usually, if you know, not completely women, but when you do see a man doing it, it's usually like, oh, I was an immigrant and I'm great. Or, you know, I love this country. You know, I work hard. Okay. But when you see these, most of these signs, it's women with these little dumbass slogans like, you know, um, no person is an illegal person or, uh, you know, families are borderless or, you know, dumb shit like that. Things that are not based in any kind of reason. It's just emotional baffle gab. It means nothing. But that's the point, because it's an emotional plea. There are no facts behind it supporting illegal immigration. And I'm going to show you that in a second, too. I'm going to show you how it's dealt with around. Well, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to tell you, but it will be down in the description. How it's being dealt with around the country, because they like to paint us as the big bad wolf because we say, fuck off, we're full or Americans first or come here legally or not at all. That's not racist. That's not xenophobic. And I will not use that word other than right now to say that. Because I don't believe that's another one of their social cudgels, right? They create these terms so they can label you so you can be dismissed and diminished without having to consider the merits of your argument. But the important thing is to not use the term, because when you use the term, you embrace the lie they're creating that you're somehow afraid of illegal immigrants. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of them there's reason to be afraid of. Not if you're carrying, but that's a different issue. But you have these people who make these little stupid pleas and try to paint us as the big bad wolf when really all we're trying to do is secure the future of the nation. You know, not for nothing, but America wasn't born, quote unquote, a great nation. Had to be built from within. And that's still say they say immigrants made America great. No, no, no. America was great. If we're talking modern, because immigration has never stopped, if we're talking modern, no, America was great and they came to the party. If we're talking back in the day, America showed promise. America had opportunity. And those people came and worked. But just because it worked back then, I love that argument. uh, uh, Immigrants came over in the 1900s and made this country what it is. So we should keep doing it. Right, because because something was good for you in the past, that means it's good for you in the future. Hey, um, it occurs to me, breast milk helps you grow when you're a baby. Do you still drink breast milk now? No? Why not? Because as you grow, your needs evolve and change. So what was good for you back then may not be good for you now. Hmm. Ellis Island... Because that's where these people had to go back in the day. It was a process. There was uh, 29 questions. They asked 29 questions. And they're all about us. No, they weren't. But some of them were. Uh, here, I have a few of them here. Of course, it'll be down in the description. Uh, have you ever been to prison? An almshouse. That's a poor house. Or an institution for care of the insane? Fair question. Are you a polygamist? Interesting question. Are you an anarchist? Are you coming to America for a job? Where will you work? Are you deformed or crippled? What is the Constitution? Who is the current president of the United States? Can you name the original 13 colonies? Now look, some of these, I think some people who live here can't do, and we should probably throw them out too. How about... Deaf people were often rejected because they were considered financial burdens. You're not going to come here. How about that? You're not going to come here and burden the system. Diseases were things that could get you disqualified or not allowed in. They marked people with their medical conditions. There's a lot of other things here for you to look over for your, you know, if you're interested The point is, we didn't just let everybody in just because they showed up. Hey, ladies, what's that called? If um, every guy that just because he says, uh, I want to sleep with you, you let him sleep with you. What's that called? 
Hey guys, uh, what's it called when people can just, you know, you're eating your lunch and somebody walks up and says, oh, I like those chips, and they take a chip. And then another person comes up and takes a chip. And then another person comes up and takes a bite of your sandwich. Another person comes up, takes a drink of your drink. And they're, and they're not all pleasant about it either. What's that called? You know, they act like saying no is a bad thing. Saying no is a good thing. See, what should be happening is American Idol should be a secondary reality show to America's next top immigrant. These people should be auditioning for the privilege of living here. We should be getting the best and the brightest. That's how we attracted those scientists. That's how we attracted those great creators that helped America stand out. Yes, they were immigrants, but they were people who had something to bring to the table. It wasn't purely a one-sided transaction where you get to come here and absorb all this and contribute zero. So, as we wrap up, ladies and gentlemen, because things have gotten a little hot over here. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's just... No, I'm not. Fuck it. I'm not sorry. It's, 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 it's annoying. Because what's going to inevitably happen is the country is going to go to shit. There's going to be a tipping point. Because, let's be honest, these people aren't even being asked to assimilate. You have signs down here in Spanish. You have commercials in Spanish. You know, the least you can do when you go to a new country is to learn the lengua franca. If they don't have an official, uh, uh, an official national language, the lingua franca is the language uh, that most people speak in that country. Here would be English. Granted, English is one of the hardest languages to learn, especially American English, because of all of the discrepancies. Understand that, but huh, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. Nobody's making you come here. But that's the least you can do. But we don't even ask that anymore. There are people now who they will occupy these neighborhoods and they will call it their little town, right? And it always looks like shit. But they'll have the gall to look at you like, what are you doing here? Motherfucker, I was born here. And, you know, black folk out there, don't let them play this game with you because they don't allow you to have this attitude when realistically a lot black people should have this attitude more than white people. Because if you want to pull up the Bureau of Labor Statistics, black people feel more low to unskilled labor jobs than white people do. What are the jobs you think these people are taking who are coming here? I can tell you this personally because I deal with a lot of them. And in the back of my mind, I will I will go to work, deal with someone who barely speaks English, who just got here, who's making pretty decent money, especially for an immigrant, making close to 25 an hour. And then I'll go to lunch, go to Arby's, and I'll see a black person working there. And just shake my head. But that Black Brown Alliance, that's how they got you. Black people should be beating this drum, uh, poor choice of words, more than anyone else. But they will guilt you. And they'll say ignorant shit. I think it was a... I don't remember. It was one of the... It was one of the uh, Latino beer commercials. I don't think it was Dos Equis. I can't think of what it was. Maybe it was Modelo. I don't know. But it said... Uh, this country was built by immigrants. That's another popular lie. Or every, no, no, they said everybody who came here is an immigrant. No, no, no. Slavery was not immigration. Don't get that twisted. But that's what I'm saying. That's what you get with that Black Brown Alliance bullshit. Whenever they come, whenever they come around and say it, you better treat them like they're Jesse Jackson and you better reach for your wallet or your purse and make sure it's still on you because they're coming to shake you down. Anyway, as we close, as we close. I want to talk to you about the top 10 toughest immigration laws in the world. And we'll go from 10 to number one. Number 10. Can you guess who it is? I was talking about the 7-Eleven earlier. It is India. 
that is true. There is no path to legal permanent residency for foreigners who are not of Indian ancestry except through marriage or by giving up their original citizenship to become naturalized. A person must leave India every five years to reapply for their long-term visa. Even if you own a business in India and invested heavily in the economy, India will never grant you residency. Uh huh. Number nine, Nigeria. Long-term expats are required to apply for a combined expatriate residency permit and aliens card, which acts as both a work permit and a residence permit. Holding an employment offer or contract is necessary and a SERPAC, uh, that's that the card that I was talking about earlier, is always tied to a specific job. If you leave Nigeria, you must reapply for re-entry. Nigeria, like most African countries, has strong cultural priorities and does not promote immigration. Austria, number eight. Most migration to Austria is done on a flexible system, which is known as the red, white, red card and is designed to grant residents based on the skills of potential incoming workers and the shortages in the Austrian labor market. The issue is there are only 11 professions that qualify under the scheme unless a person has exceptional critical skills in demand. This makes Austria impossible to move to unless you have a very specific skill set. Are you, are, you, are you catching the drift here? Have you heard anything about free college? Have you heard anything about welfare? Have you heard anything? Number seven, Switzerland. To be considered for permanent residency, you must live in Switzerland for 10 years. To be eligible to do that, you must be either a high net worth investor, married to a Swiss partner, or be employed by a Swiss company in a highly skilled and well-paid role. In short, those who want to emigrate to Switzerland have a mountain. Of, oh, God, I hate when they make these stupid puns. Uh, number six, the Gulf states. I'm assuming that's like uh, around the Middle East, like um, uh, UAE, United Arab Emirates and them. I'm assuming the Gulf states allow a huge immigrant influx to meet the demand for cheap, low skilled labor. But the immigrants are temporary. With no rights to permanent residency and must leave once their job has finished and they have no rights to join a union or other employment protection. There is also no access to health care or education. Number five, South Korea. As a country that places a high value on its ethnic and cultural homogeneity, uh, homogeneity, excuse me. Korea only allows homogeneity means they want to keep the race pure. Korea only allows temporary low skilled workers to do difficult, dangerous and demanding jobs. To become a Korean citizen is virtually impossible. The number of Koreans living abroad exceeds the number of migrants within Korea. And with more than 2 million Koreans residing elsewhere, many in advanced countries, including the United States, Canada, Australia, and Japan. Number four, China. Chinese citizenship is legally authorized, but in practice is near impossible. According to the law of citizenship, if you're a foreigner seeking Chinese citizenship, you must either be a relative of Chinese citizens or permanently living in China, making immigration to China one of the hardest in the world. Despite a population approaching 1.4 billion during the fifth national population census in 2000, there were only 941 naturalized citizens who did not belong to a recognized communist party. 
Number three, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia's government is keen to protect the country's status quo and doesn't want to compromise its cultural values. There's that phrase again. You know, like pulling over when there's a siren. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Down here in Florida, these people will ignore emergency vehicles. But there's that cultural values thing. Or standard of living. Just to I'll re, 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 uh, state the sentence since I uh, interrupted it. Uh, I don't want to compromise its cultural values or standard of living by allowing foreigners to become permanent members of society. Your only route to becoming a naturalized citizen is by marriage to a national. Even this, however, doesn't guarantee citizenship, particularly for non-Muslims. Number two, Denmark. Denmark's most scrutinized laws on immigration is the 24 year rule, which states that for a foreign for a for the foreign spouse of a Danish citizen to qualify for citizenship, both the Danish spouse and the foreign spouse must be at least 24 years old. The rule's purpose is to limit the number of immigrants, prevent forced marriages and create a better integration process. And number one, Japan. Since the spring of 2009, the Nikki law. Nikki refers to a Latin American immigrant of Japanese descent. They have a word for you in Japan. And it's an N word, ironically enough. Anyway, the Nikki law offers unemployed Latin American immigrants 3000 US dollars to leave Japan and return to their home country. Foreign policy reported. Their family members also get 2000 US dollars for the relocation. There's just one catch. Can you guess what it is? You only get the payment if you promise that you will never return to Japan for work. How about a couple more before we leave? Fuck it. What happens to illegal immigrants worldwide? Well, jumping the border in Singapore is punishable by six months in prison and not less than three strokes with a cane. They beat your ass for doing it. In Russia, you can earn up to two years in a prison labor camp. Pakistan goes as high as 10 years in prison. India, eight. But we're too tough, right? How about Canada and the United Kingdom? Six month minimum sentences. So those are our wokey contemporaries, right? Canada's always talking about how draconian we are. We don't even really put these people in prison. We just send them back. Or under Joe Biden, we take the military and ferry them to wherever they want to go. Iceland, Jordan, Guatemala, six month sentences. Italy, 15 years in prison. You get the point. I'll have all of this down there in the description for you to read. There's a lot more of them. Uh, It goes into the Nakia law. One of these other episodes goes into uh, some of these other countries and how they fine you. But look. You guys get the point. I'm sorry, I've gone way over, way over. We're past a half hour now. Enough is fucking enough. It's time to shut her down. Let's get a head count. Let's look out for our own. Kick out the ones that aren't supposed to be here. Regroup. Come up with a better plan. And we'll see you fuckers in 50 years. That's all I got for you guys for now. Appreciate each and every one of you tuning in. And until the next time, we're full. Fuck off.